Velociraptors are dromaeosaurs from the late Cretaceous. They got their popularity from Jurassic Park, in which they are unfortunately one of the least accurate to the real life animal. They weren't nearly as big, and they were certainly covered in feathers. In this video, I'll go over 100 years of history of Velociraptor representations from their discovery in 1923 to today in, right, 2024. Happy New Year! After that, I'll explore the idea of what if Velociraptor survived the KBG extinction and lived today. On August 11, 1923, the first Velociraptor fossil was found in the Gobi Desert. I couldn't find any depictions until the 60s, but I have a feeling it didn't change a lot in that time. They knew it was reptilian with some kind of relation to birds, but I guess they didn't realize how close it was. It was featherless and looked like a standing lizard, but with the signature sickle claw. As a contrast to the usual slow lumbering dinosaur depictions of the time, they were always thought of as fast and powerful, more like birds. I definitely prefer the feathery design, but these look like cool animals anyway. It's not too different from the Jurassic Park design, though maybe slightly less shrink wrapped. Also, I just feel like I should say this, even though the ones in JP are called Velociraptors, they're not really based on them. They're based on the Deinonychus, which is a much bigger dromaeosaur. Just a note, Deinonychus still has feathers so it's not even accurate to that. Anyway, let's look at today's depiction. From snout to tail, they were 1.5 to 2 meters long, but their tail takes up most of that so they only weighed about 15 kilograms. After feathers were discovered on Velociraptor, they also discovered quill knobs on its forearm in 2007. This along with other evidence leads paleontologists to believe dromaeosaurs are actually secondarily flightless, like ostriches, meaning that their ancestors could fly. That's why we depict them with such large wing feathers, even though they themselves weren't capable of flight. Think of them like weird turkeys. They had super long tails with long tail feathers at the end that may have had a fan shape, and they might have had remnants of leg wings like other ancient birds. Is this a bird? Technically, no, but... The line's so blurry that there may as well not be one. It's really about the vibes to me, and this is giving blurry. That <laughs> wasn't scientific advice. Anyway, it had teeth, a long tail, and no kind of beak, so it was still nothing like a bird today. To be fair to me though, Archaeopteryx has all those features too, and everyone calls that a bird. I don't know, seems kind of arbitrary. What I can say for sure is that these guys were super cool, and they hunted relatively small prey, kind of like coyotes or bobcats do today. So let's get into the cool section of this video. What if it survived the KPG extinction? And before y'all expert paleontologists type your comments, let me just note that we don't have any actual evidence that it even survived up to the end of the Cretaceous, like we do for lots of other late Cretaceous animals. Anyway, let's start at the Paleogene period, which was 66 to 23 million years ago. That's a pretty huge span of time, for example, Pachycetus, which is what we think of as the ancestor of whales, though it's a small, dog-sized land mammal, lived 50 million years ago, while Bacillosaurus, a fully aquatic whale, lived 30 million years ago. So I'm going to be generous about the animals that lived at that time, even if some of them never actually saw each other. The Paleogene was when mammals diversified and became the dominant megafauna on land like the dinosaurs before them. Velociraptor was found in what is now the Gobi Desert in Asia, so let's think about some animals from there during the Paleogene. Gastornis was a huge herbivorous flightless bird that lived in the early Paleogene, which was kind of all over the place geographically, but there is a species from midland China. There's also Mimotona, a lagomorph from China. There's not a whole lot of info on it, but lagomorphs are the order of mammals that rabbits are in, and it seems like Mimotona was pretty small. It's giving prey. I really couldn't find a ton of info on Paleogene animals in the region, but let me know if there's anything cool I missed. So, Velociraptor could probably stay a similar size, and it could fill the niche of a coyote or a bobcat as it hunts the Mimotona. Gastornis keeps the niche of a large theropod, so Velociraptor will actually get smaller so it has less trouble getting food. It has a stiffer tail and smaller hand claws so it can glide short distances after a jump to dive at its prey with superior speed. It uses the claws on its feet to grab its prey, and finishes them off with a bite to their jugular. Measuring 3 quarters of a meter across, it's quite a bit lighter than the Cretaceous Velociraptor, 
but even more agile. It mostly hunts small animals and is kind of like a mini terror bird. To compare it to a living animal, I guess it's like a groundhog. I'll call it Orniraptor for its similarities to modern birds. Let's look at the area in today's Neocene period, which is a lot more interesting to me, especially because we can get more specific. Although the Gobi Desert is harsh, it contains a surprising diversity of animals. Notably, that includes mammalian carnivores like bears, snow leopards, and wolves. There's also plenty of birds from small songbirds to falcons to cranes. Realistically, these species would evolve differently if they had lived with an actual velociraptor, but the, if the dromaeosaur is our only variable, how would it have changed? With the mammalian predators taking the ground carnivore niche, I think velociraptor will have to take to the skies. Its snout will become a beak to lose weight, and it'll also lose its hand claws for the same reason. It keeps its sharp razor teeth and sickle claw, so it can be the best aerial attacker in the desert. Here's the Neogene Velociraptor. It's a bit smaller than the Saker Falcon, but larger than the Amur Falcon, both of which only stick around for breeding season. The Velociraptor stays there all year, preying on lizards and other birds. It has a meter-long wingspan and can weigh almost a kilogram. From a glance, it just looks like a modern bird, but the thick leg feathers, sickle claw, and teeth give away that it's actually a dromaeosaur. Sorry it looks so normal. If you're a fan of the channel, you know that I just really like birds, so uh, this is actually awesome and you're wrong. Anyway, my next video of this kind will be on Dinosuchus, which is a dinosaur eating crocodilian. That one will probably look a little cooler. Consider subscribing for that, and also check out my Patreon, which you can subscribe to for just a dollar a month, and you can have your name at the end of my videos. Thanks Captain Kobop, and thank you for watching.